So I drove around the block, and uh, when I came back, I pulled in, and this was the day All after. Right, wait. So he pulled in, and we're going to watch what happened. And that's the front of my bike right there. Hey, Dylan. Dylan. You can talk to me, bro. We, we, we have to live here together. I mean, I get in college when I'm talking to you. I'm trying to start in trouble. I'm just saying we got to live here. Somewhat harmonious, right? And this was a day after court where he wanted a permanent restraining order against but it me. Doesn't but was that, was that supposed to help you said. or help him? Just to show you what happens. He wants to be a friend with me now that he's so terrified he wanted a permanent restraining order. But you had one too, right? I, I did after he had... It was 15, never granted. If he had no legal assault against me, then I would talk to him just fine. But he's still attacking me with the court. He called his paralegal. I got a phone call right after that, Chris. Dylan, blah, 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 leave him alone. And all I was trying to do was make peace. Just trying to make peace. And you had a restraining order that you had filed? No, it was done. Now the restraining it was order not, had been exhausted. It had not gone through yet, no. But we were in the court the day before, and the judge canceled out both restraining orders. Okay. Legally, if I had talked to him, I'd but get But the his lawyer had told him that it really could take up to 24 to 48 hours. Mr. Sullivan, stand up. That kind of thing, so... So at that point, I had called Mr. Buono and let him know that the restraining order system had not been updated yet with the court system. The attorney had told me to tell Mr. Black not to have any contact with him until that system was updated. But at the end of the day, they were both dismissed, right? They were both dismissed. Okay. Legally. All right, if my colleagues have right. any, any other further questions? questions. I have nothing further. All right. We'll excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's now in recess. Okay, they can't both be telling the truth. This cannot be chalked up to different people having different views of the same event. I think something happened between the two of them that caused him to fall into the fence. I'm just not exactly sure what happened. His daughter has no credibility to me at all. The paralegal has no credibility to me at all. I think the plaintiff did say inappropriate things on that phone call. I don't think it was anything to make the defendant fear for his life. I also don't believe that the right. plaintiff made the fact that he hit the fence up out of the clear blue. I don't discount his daughter's statement simply because she is his daughter. I mean, she said that she was going to hit him with a five iron. If you were lying, you probably wouldn't add something like that into the lie. <laughs> but objectively speaking, he has a witness who saw what happened, and I would credit her I testimony. Would, I would, too. We're not in a criminal court where the burden no. is beyond a reasonable doubt. I may and, have some and, issue with that. And there but... is also another aspect of the evidence that... The video, video didn't help that the, the defendant, defendant showed, yeah. showed an actual attempt to settle the matter. Let's... I agree with you, Michael, in that there was a witness. She actually saw the shove. And I just simply don't think he remembered what happened. Because somebody here is lying. Somebody put some hands on somebody. And I believe it was the defendant, whether it was as aggressive as the plaintiff might have described. But I think that he did put some hands on him. And again, he had a witness. So I'm going to give the plaintiff credibility here and side with him. I don't know if $5,000 is warranted here. That's, well, that's a whole other issue. conversation. That's an issue. I think both of your points are well taken, that we're dealing with a preponderance of the evidence. And do I believe slightly more likely than not that something probably happened as a result of the defendant to cause what I see as very minor injuries? I do. I think 51%, I think I'm there. I wouldn't give it more than $500. He has no medical bills. He's not suing for pain and suffering. I would say $500. I mean, he has a tiny little cut on his arm, tiny, and he's got a scrape. I can get along with that. I would give him $1,500. Woo! How do you come but, to that number? Because this is, number one, a matter of respect. Number two, I tend to disbelieve the defendant, so therefore I didn't find him credible. I see that the plaintiff attempted to resolve it in a very peaceful, non-litigious way. I think $1,500 is reasonable. We do have to send a message in terms of, like, the, the defendant did come in here. I, I don't know if he's intentionally trying to lie, but he's not being honest with us. And I'm good with $500. I'm good with $1,500. You know. I'm okay with giving $500. I think $1,500 sends the right message to the defendant. What about 1000 1000 Yeah. Will that mean for the be, sake of unanimity? For the sake of unity, begrudgingly, I would agree. I will go with $1,000. Okay, I'm good with that. I think so. We All have right. a verdict. Good.